In the last episode, you learned how to create Halt Inputs with the Player Input component. Now I will show you how to convert this into the coding-only approach with all the generated c -sharp classes. Welcome, I am Valvary. Our input contains a simple movement and an interaction with a tab and with a slow tab event, which is represented by these little texts. But for now, we don't need the player input component anymore, so delete it. Or at least deactivate it. Go to your input actions file. We won't change anything in here, so you don't have to open it. But when highlighted, in the inspector you can see this checkbox here. Check it. You now have some options before Unity will generate the c -sharp class. I will change the path, or else the script file will be in our inputs folder. Change it to your scripts folder. The name automatically matches the file name, which is fine. Hit apply and the script will be generated. For me it is now in my scripts folder. It looks like this, but unless you are interested, this is not of need. In our player controller, we will now add an object of this class. In my case, the class name is player inputs. Make sure to use the correct name for you. You can find it either here, without the add, or in your file name. I'll name the variable inputs, but this part is up to you. Now we need to tell Unity to create a new instance of this class by adding this line to our awake function. Add this on enable function to your code and enable your inputs, or else nothing from the following code will work. In the previous approach, we needed to assign the actions to our corresponding methods via the Unity UI, which was quite tedious and easy to forget. Now we can make these assignments via the code. In your onEnable function, write the following. Your input variable, inputs, dot, your action map, here gameplay, dot, your action. At first, let's use the movement. But now you also have to use one of our three input states, started, performed or cancelled. So let's go with performed. Now write plus, equal, and the name of our function, here on movement. That will add the function to this action without overriding others. So you can easily assign more than one function to an interaction. Let's check the behavior in Unity. Well, our fish is moving, but he isn't stopping after releasing the movement keys. This is because every performed event sends the current vector 2. This vector 2 will only be zero when we don't press anything. But we can gain this information from our cancel event. So let's add our onMovement method to the cancelled event as well. When we now test again, everything works like before. Quite simple, isn't it? Now let's swap the code for our interactions too. As you can see, we used all the events in our interaction method. So it's simple to see that we need to assign all three of these to this function. Without any further requirements, this will work, so let's test it. Tap and hold are working flawlessly. So currently the best advantage to the previous approach is that we can handle all of our assignments in the code without forgetting it in the Unity UI. Assigning all these states to your methods may seem annoying to you. Let me show you why it is the complete opposite. In our interaction method we currently have the switch case differentiating between exactly those three states. So why should we do this if we already know those up here? Let's split this big function into three separate ones, each with their own use case accordingly to the current state. I name them like the states and copy the inner parts of the switch case statements in there. On every interaction I also hide every UI text. This function call is now needed in all three new functions. Now I can delete the old function and assign the new ones accordingly to our interactions here. That's it! You now have a clean handling between those three states and every function only handles their own responsibility. Furthermore, a few tips. It is good practice to remove those assigned functions when disabling the script. So add an onDisable function and copy-paste those lines. Replace the plus with a minus sign. At last you can disable the role input variable. This gives you also the opportunity to assign those methods to a specific action on the fly. Let's say when the player isn't holding anything in its hand, the interaction let him pick something from the ground. 
you can assign your pickup method to the interaction input. But when he is holding something, the interaction will let him use this item. So you just have to assign and remove the methods whenever is is holding something state changes. This is cleaner and easier to read than if else statements everywhere over your code. This approach with C-sharp classes gives you a lot of cool and clean opportunities to include your inputs to your game. Many other tutorials use those, but for a beginner it might be difficult to understand what's going on. Therefore I made those three episodes leading to this point. I hope you could follow along, and if you enjoyed the content, consider liking and subscribing, and I see you next time.